to another uh, Game Smash podcast. As always, I'm your host, uh, William Liberty, and with me today is... Who well, is Muhammad Yusuf. And uh, let's talk about the games we've been playing. Uh, I've been playing a couple. Uh, I recently got back into Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, which Ooh. is a lot of fun. Um, and uh, because I have a couple of friends who also have the the 3DS version, so usually we get together and we'll play like a couple of a uh, couple of quests and stuff like that. And it's just you know I love Monster Hunter. It's it's one of the first RPG games I've ever played. It was actually it was the first multiplayer game I actually played on the PlayStation Two. Monster Hunter oh, really? One. Yeah, and it was quite the experience. Um. And I've probably, I, I think it's probably still my favorite multiplayer experience overall because I found that there were less douchebags saying, oh, you scrub in Monster Hunter. Huh. I, I don't know. I just found that the community was really good for Monster Hunter, just overall in general. And I was having a lot of fun just revisiting stuff, especially since we're at the point of the game where it's like our weapons do like no damage and the monsters take like 40 minutes to kill. It's, it's huh. great. It's fun. Uh, and then other than that, I've been playing some more of Persona Q, and, uh, I've realized now that that game is going to take me forever to beat, uh. because, and it's not even the game's fault, um, the reason why it's gonna take me forever to beat is that there's treasure chests in the game that in order to unlock, you have to walk over every single tile of a level, like just the floor. And the thing is, is that my OCD is like, oh, I can just, I can just skip the treasure. But then it's like, but what if it's really good? I can't take that chance. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, I've, uh, it's just been, uh, it's been hard to avoid those chests. So I end up just, uh, exploring all the little nooks and crannies of the levels and stuff like that. I did beat the first boss, so I am making progress, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it only took me eight hours. So there we go. <laughs> But yeah, that's okay. basically what I've been playing. Uh, what about you, Fawaz? Well, um, it's funny that you mentioned Monster Hunter, because I've been playing a, uh, a similar game, uh, Soul Sacrifice. Ah, yes, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, I downloaded it a while back, but I never really got to play it. So I um, I started playing it, and it's 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 okay so far. I don't really, I don't like the aesthetic. I don't like how it looks aesthetically. Oh, okay, so just presentation-wise, or yeah, presentation-wise, I don't really like it, and the com and the combat's really boring right now. But mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'll I'll give it I'll give it some time. See see if I see if it grows on me or something. Yeah. But but yeah, that and then I um, I brought back Skyrim a little bit. Ah yes, good old Skyrim. Yeah, good old Skyrim. Um, just, just trying to, just, just trying to clean up my uh, trophies on that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's been pretty fun. I have my little, uh, my little archer. Yeah, so uh, you're, you're full, uh, full archer kind of character, I'm assuming. Well, no, no, she's like a, uh, well, she's a red guard first of all. Okay. Um, and she's an archer summoner, so you know, I like summon my Dramora lord, and he tanks the damage, and I'm just in the back filling them up with arrows. Yeah, there you go. I yeah. Gotcha. One thing, one thing about Skyrim though, uh, the con I don't know, you you played Skyrim. Yeah, yeah, played obviously. Skyrim. Yeah. Yeah, the bound bow. That thing is broken. Oh. Um, I got the bound bow at like rank at like level. Oof. Let's go with level nine, just yeah, to be safe. That. I got I I got the the spell to summon a bound bow at level nine. And I am level thirty five now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I still haven't found a bow <laughs> at the stats. Yeah, there were a couple of broken weapons. The one that I remember the most was um there was a scimitar that you could get off uh you could only get it if you went down the Assassin's Guild quest line. Mm -hmm. Um, but there was a scimitar on a boat, at the very end of a boat, and I'm not sure what I think it was like the Windseer or something like that. But the, the gimmick with it, and it might have been patched, but the gimmick with it was is that every time you hit with it, you have a chance to stun. Like a 50% chance to stun your opponent. And yeah. the thing is, is that if you just spam that against anything in the game, you can just lock them into, like, stun lock them. Yeah. To the point where it's like, I could go up to a dragon and just flail on it with this sword, and it would not get off the ground or do anything, because it would just continually be stunlocked. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, just a little unbalanced, you know. Nothing too yeah. crazy. <laughs> but 
yeah, yeah. So those are those are mainly that's mainly what I've been playing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's just dive into some news. Uh, right and now. Hearthstone. Yeah, and of Hearthstone, of course, every time. <laughs> um, right away, uh, Kung Lao got revealed for Mortal Kombat X. Uh, Whoop. Yeah, excited. Um, and uh, I'm, I guess uh, they were talking about how some of the mechanics. Um, he he looks a lot older in this one. Well, that tends to happen when 25 years pass. Yeah, d definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one thing I was looking at the I was looking at the screenshot. And uh, I actually like his hat more in this one than I did in the last one because it, it it's all spiky and stuff like that, and I I, I kind of think it's cool. The hat, yeah, uh, is uh, I don't know if you know, but this Mortal Kombat 10 is introducing or X, however you want to pronounce it, is introducing this new feature mm -hmm. where every character in the game has three different, let's say, um, fighting styles. Right? Okay. You pick them at the start of a match. And then it changes some stuff up for the character. Like, um, there's this one, uh, let me see, I think we're going to example. There's this one character, um, um, Kotal Khan. Yep. One stance gives him access to a command grab, and that command grab gives him some really cool uh, benefits. The other stance gives him access to this really long range sword. So, with, um, and then when you, when you switch stances, your character also switches appearance slightly. So oh, that spiky okay. hat that you see in that image is representative of one of his stances. Oh, okay, so there's actually yeah. probably th three different hats. Yes. Okay, yes, yes, I yes, got yes. you. If you look through the screen, there's actually a screenshot where he has his regular old school straight, really sharp hat and everything. Yeah. But okay. yeah, I just figured I'd let you know. But I guess that's kind of cool because it allows you, it's like maybe you like this character, but you don't like particularly the way he plays, so it gives you a couple different ways that you can play him. So This is true, and it also helps with matchups. Because um, in, in fighting, I mean, in most competitive games, you have your matchups. When you have so many different characters, some characters will be better against other characters. So some characters will just not be very good against certain characters just right. because of their design. So when you have different stances like that, it could theoretically help you say you know i have i'm playing this one character and i, and I play him primarily in this one stance but in this other matchup i mm -hmm. switch up the stance so it, it, it it's there's a lot of potential there and hopefully it's it's realized yeah yeah, yeah. like I, I just i like that feature because it just it it means that it probably means that they're going to have a smaller roster but i feel like it means probably. that the roster is going to be overall a little bit better because yeah, that's the thing yeah. is that uh, out of all the fighting games that I've seen and played, it's like I don't mind the smaller roster just as long yeah. as the characters are fun to play with. Like, like I'm not the kind of guy who wants like a 40-character roster or something like that. Yeah, or... yeah. No, I agree with you 100%. I mean, um, at the end of the day, you're probably only going to play three of them. Exactly. So, so, like, who needs 40 characters? I mean, one, one, of the, one game that I really enjoyed the last generation was Blaze Blue. Mm -hmm. And Blaze Blue launched with only 12 characters. At right. first, I was disappointed. But then every character, it was so unique that I didn't even mind. But before I get too far off track, another mm -hmm. thing that was revealed with the Mortal Kombat was the they, they gave a little hint at the uh, online features. Yes. I, so with the online features, apparently when you first log in, you get to pick between five factions. I cannot remember them off the top of uh, my head. I actually have them. Um, the ah. five factions are... Uh, oh, I'm going to butcher this. Uh, Lin... Quay, yeah, yeah the Lin going, Quay, the uh, Black Dragon. Yeah, the Black Dragon's one of them. Special Force, and Brotherhood of Shadows, and White Lotus. Uh, White Lotus. Yeah, okay. Stole that from yeah. Korra. <laughs> yeah, so you pick one of those five, and it, they didn't give us too many details about them. But the impression I'm getting is that there's gonna be, um, there's gonna be, like every everything you do, like gains you points for your faction or something like that. Yeah. And then I guess maybe maybe like every every like six months i don't know i don't know we'll see what but you know yeah. it's it's a um i guess it's kind of a guild ish kind it's of it's a guild ish kind of thing yes and yeah. i'm really intrigued to see where they go with that um at the moment the only difference is that the only difference is that your menu is going to be different which is cool but yeah i'm really looking forward to seeing where they go with that but um but yeah i mean i'm excited mortal kombat x i do wish they would speed up the uh, frequency of these character reveals yeah the they seem to be like re well uh, sorry sorry to cut you off but it seems like yeah it seems like they've been like far and few in between and and now that the game is relatively you know coming out april? like april yeah. yeah april it's gonna probably be like a huge dump of character reveals all at once yeah yeah i can't i can't even remember when the last character reveal was it's been i think it was kano and that was in like like september i think yeah it's, that was a while 
Yeah, yeah, it's been. I mean, they had a little gameplay thing uh, like two months ago, so that was cool. But it's been it's been so long. But anyway, let me know. It's yeah, it's Mortal Kombat X. You know. Yeah, so. looking looking forward to it. You know, you know, can't, can't wait to pull off fatalities once again. You can't go wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad they actually revealed Kung Lao because I still think Kung Lao's like buzzsaw fatality. From like Mortal Kombat Nine is just the best. The one where, where he like where he throws his hat on yeah the on the ground and then pulls them like that's yeah. the, that's the best in the entire that game. Pretty, yeah. uh, and uh, all right, moving on from that. Uh, apparently, apparently, Fawaz, it's going to be a huge year for Rare. <laughs> this is going to be the year that everything changes, or at least this is what uh, Robin Beanland, uh, composer of uh, a couple of Rare games, you know, like uh, Golden Eye and Conquerors Bad Fur Day. Um, recently he tweeted, uh, showing off some, um, um, a sheet of music, uh, from a mysterious game that he might b be working on that's related to Rare, and he just says this is going to be a big year. So, what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you a, a quick, uh, what was the last relevant game Rare made? Um, I, I honestly, I, honestly, if I had to say relevant but not good... I would say Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Yes, and that was in 2008. So that's yeah. Yeah. six years. That is six years. I have cousins that are younger than that. <laughs> um, but you know what? I think they're still talented, rare, despite yeah. everything. I mean, like, I, it's no secret their time at Microsoft has been, you know, nothing short of catastrophic. Yeah. It, um, it's, it's it's actually really sad because you can literally tell like as soon as they made grab by the ghoulies i was just like oh no it's gonna go downhill from here it here's really the thing, is though is that viva pinata was it was actually very good viva pinata was a very yeah good no it wasn't bad it, yeah but other than viva pinata um and then cameo cameo should have been better but it was originally designed for the GameCube, then it moved to the Xbox, then it moved to the yeah. Xbox 360. So all of that shit, you know, kind of yeah. kind of hurt the development of the game. It, but it, yeah. so I, th I think there's still talent and there's still hope. But at the same time, I'm not going to get excited because the last time I got excited for a rare game, I got nuts and bolts. So, <laughs> so I'm just going to wait and see. They have a wide... I mean, uh, uh, just another thing, like the best rare... Okay, no, uh, just to scratch that. Uh, no, no point in going into that. They have a wide variety of IPs that they can um, that they can work on. Yes, and you know, I think there's still talent there. So you know, they could work on a new IP for for Microsoft. I I, I think I will hold off. I mean, I, I, I've, only God knows. I mean, he could be talking about uh, Kinect Sports Three. You know, for yeah. all we know. Oh, so I'm gonna hold yeah. off until until I hear more. But. <laughs> Hopefully, Rare can can bring it back because that has been one of the most depressing stories of the past ten years. Uh, it's just the slow the decline of Rare, and uh, yes. but it's like Seriously. it's but it's yeah. almost like they're making stupid decisions. Like like in I forget what which E three it was. I think it was one of the recent ones where they showed off Project uh, Project Spark, right? Yeah. Um, and then they fair. yeah, but they had the tease with Conquer at the very end. Huh, and everyone yeah. was like, "Oh, it's gonna be a new Conquer game! Oh my god!" And then it was just, "Oh no, he's just he's just in the game," and it's, it's like it's shit like that where it's like, seriously, guys, you shouldn't be doing that. You're just <laughs> pissing us off even more. Like it's one of those things where it's like we're shouting at you to try and save yourselves, and you're just throwing yourself into a pit of lava. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I I like I like I like um cross game stuff like that you know like like how like how um dead or alive 3 had a secret character that was a spartan yeah and then halo 3 had a had an armor that was based off a dead or alive character i like i like cross stuff like that the, mm -hmm. the issue with with um with rare doing that is the fact that okay so conquer like Conquer is in these people's games. You haven't made a you haven't made a Conquer game in like twenty years. Because I mean, yeah. what's that thing called? Um, the one that came out on the Xbox was the re-release. Yeah, so it was re brand new Conquer game Reloaded. Like twenty years, yeah. and then yeah, you're, you're putting Conquer in somebody else's. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 unfortunate, but you know. Hopefully this is a big. Hopefully this time next year we're talking about how you know Rare made this big comeback. Although I doubt I doubt it. We can call it a comeback because we're gonna be like one game. Yeah. You know? So, but, you know, one good game is, I mean, like, no one has faith in Rare anymore. Literally, there's no faith in Rare anymore. So one good game can go a long way to 
to to rekindle an interest yeah. in that company. Yeah. Yeah. So I can. I can see hopefully that. Hopefully, he's right, and it's not just PR bullshit. Yeah. And if yeah. if it is a new IP, then you know, good good on them, and you know, maybe because honestly, I think they need to do another creative new IP. Like, like sure, I'd really love for them to revisit their classics, but if they can come up with something very creative. And um, you know maybe something funny again, and you know I would I would I would take interest in that, and m- maybe this will be the year. Who knows? I yeah. could be completely wrong, but uh, I'm I'm not I'm not uh, gonna be reaching uh, just yet. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, and on that note, um, so Dragon's Crown developers of VanillaWare, uh, they just teased uh, they sh- they sh- they showed an image for their new game. Uh, I don't know if they gave it a name la- yet, but they just said it's gonna blast off in 2015, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm just looking at this image, and I'm just like, Jesus, do these guys just want to like start fires, like get people really ticked off? Because, because uh, like for those who are probably looking at the image that is on screen, it's like three girls with their legs spread open. I mean, like it's robot girls, yeah. But uh, like, what's your take on this, Foss? Um, you know, just uh, real quick for the people that don't know. Um, uh, oh God, what are they called again? Vanillaware. There we go. Vanillaware are the developers behind Muramasa, which yep. is a really, which is a really, really good. Um, Wii and Vita game, yes. and Dragon's Crown, an amazing game on the Vita and the PS3. They they have a um, they have a very very unique art style, and in Dragon's Crown especially in Muramasa mm-hmm. it wasn't too, but in Dragon's Crown they used very exaggerated proportions. Quote yes. unquote. Now these um <laughs> these character models cause a bit of a stir because the sorceress, you know, yeah, the sorceress had had tits that were bigger than than the dwarf. <laughs> The and then the Amazon, the, the Amazon had some really really big thighs. Yeah. But um, but like for me, I never understood. I never I never understood what the problem was because because the knights and the dwarf were both exaggerated as well. The, the dwarf you couldn't even see the dwarf's legs. All you saw was torso. He was yeah. just arms and chest. And same with the <laughs> same with the knight. So anyway, that's that's a bit of a um, that's just a bit of a uh, primer in regards to this. Honestly, honestly, I don't, I don't care. Um, I, I, mean, I can care. see why people you know, when would. When Benita first came out and I saw the first trailer for Benita, I was like, oh my God, this is so, you know, she's overly sexualized and blah, blah, blah. And I played the game and the game was awesome. I didn't care. So like I've gone to this point where I just do not give a <sighs> damn. If this, this might not even be a video game. This might just be them, you know. Uh, just doing you know, art about or how, something like you know, that. Yeah. I think that, yeah. This might be a way of saying Happy New Year. It's a very, you know. Um, provocative is that the word I'm looking yeah, for? Yeah, I guess we could say provocative. <laughs> I think the only problem is uh, this is the only problem I kind of have where this one makes me a little bit more uncomfortable because with Dragon's Crown, I was like, okay, the sorceress has really big boobs. All right, there's there's no doubt about that, but it's clear that she's an older lady. You know what I mean? Um, with this, it goes where it's like I'm looking at this and it's like these quote unquote girls, they kind of look younger. And I get a little bit more uncomfortable when I look more into that. So that that's the only problem I have. They're also ha- robots. Yeah, so. I know they're robots, but come on, Fawaz. Like, it's... I mean, and it's not like, it's not like they're having sex or anything. Yeah, it's yeah. It's giant robots. It's just giant robots. Yeah, but, like... But, me- yeah. I, I don't know, maybe it's, I don't know what it is, but I do agree with you, it's like, it's like, when you play Bayonetta, it's like, yeah, you know, the first scene in the game, she's half naked and flying around, but then you actually play the game, and the combat is really awesome, and, yeah, the story is over the top and ridiculous, but it understands that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, <laughs> but, I don't know, it's just for some, for whatever reason, this image kind of makes me just a bit uncomfortable, but. I don't. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just I can, me. I, I can see what you mean. Um, because 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 the robot because the robot has such a big head and a small body, it looks like a young girl. Yeah, that's that's the only problem I have with it. And like maybe I could be wrong. Where it's like this is just one aspect of it. And with Dragon's Crown, it's like yeah, you saw the sorceress, but there was all this other really awesome art in, in the game, like the dragons Very and the chimeras, and fuck, those bosses were look so cool. And, uh, and that's, it just, the presentation overall was really good. Um, I, I don't know, maybe if, maybe if it wasn't just this screenshot and I saw more, I could be like, okay, this is probably not, not bad, not that bad, but, uh, I don't know. 
But we'll we'll see where it goes. Like we don't even know if this is an actual game yet. <laughs> this is yet. true. This is true. But yeah. I genuinely think they just do it to piss because because people get so angry when they see all this stuff. I think they actually do it just to piss people off. I would because because like um and this is this is gonna be a bit of a a, a tangent, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the whole situation with Bayonetta and 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 Dragon's Crown. What what upset me about it, right? Was that yes. Yes, yes, yes. The female, two of the female characters were exaggerated. The elf wasn't. The elf was normal. Yeah. But then two of the male characters were exaggerated, and then the wizard was normal. But then what? What? Why I just didn't understand why people were upset about it was that okay? Here, you like we're always we're always complaining about you know diversity in video games and representation and all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. There are genuine points for that. But I'm like, here you have a video game with six six main characters who are all equals, right? Three guys, three women. The yeah. women are all as strong as the men. None of them are damsels in distresses. None of them none of them require the men to save them. They, I mean, yeah. the character, I, I used the elf. That was the character I used for yeah, the entire Yeah, exactly. Time. And she kicked ass. You yeah, know? elf she was fucking need, awesome. Yeah. She didn't need the dwarves' help or anything like that. Sure, the sorceress was a bit of a support class, but I mean, every class in this game needs a support class. Yeah, exactly. Um, you need a healer. Yeah, and yeah. then you know the same thing with Bayonetta. You know, you have Bayonetta, who's I mean, not only she, I mean, she's she's not even equal to any of the men in the game. She's superior to all of them. You know, pretty much sure. all of them. <laughs> what? Pretty much all of them in in the game. Yeah, much. exactly. Sure, her proportions are ridiculous. She's got like she's <laughs> like those <laughs> like those. She's got legs that go on for days. But yeah. here's the thing: is that most of the male characters in video games don't even have realistic proportions. Even Marcus Phoenix's neck is bigger than my torso. <laughs> like you know, um. Kratos, I mean, look at Kratos for God's sake. You know, he looks like he's on steroids. Like, yeah, he pretty half much of the is. Characters don't don't have believable builds either. So I'm like, you know, here you have here you have female characters who are powerful, uh, who are kicking ass and taking names. And I'm like, why why then bicker about about something so minor and irrelevant? In my honest opinion, of course, you know, I'm not a woman, so you know, I'm, so you know. <laughs> But yeah, Maybe you know, I, I do get what you're saying. Is, is... I just don't see because I mean, I, when I see the dwarf, I don't, I don't, I don't feel uncomfortable for having such a small upper body. I'm like, whatever, you know, it's a video game. Yeah. But then you know, that that's just me. So yeah, yeah, I just, I just had to get that off my chest because you know, it just, it just, it just upsets me when, when. I think, it's... I think what does upset me in, in some way, it's, it's this is sort of a, a different take on it. Is that it, it says to me that it's like something like this can turn people off immediately from the game, and it's like these aren't necessarily bad games. These are actually pretty damn good games, yeah, like mechanically kind of good, and yeah, and presentation wise, and it's just. It's just something minute like this can turn people away, and that gets me a little bit annoyed because it's like, look, if you just if you look past this, then <laughs> you could you're gonna get a really good game, and that's worth your time and effort. Just yeah, but yeah, it's just it's just one of those things where, uh, well, we'll see where this goes. We'll see. We'll if it, see where this yeah. goes. <laughs> Hopefully, it's a video game because yeah. I like the. Um, I'd be interested to see if you know how to, how they handle a mech. A mech-based setting, or because, a you know, sci-fi setting, concept. like a sci-fi so, setting in general. Sorry, sci-fi. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, because you know, Muramasa was setting like feudal Japan. Then uh, Dragon's Crown was setting like Europe. I guess. Yeah, I Europe, mean, medieval Europe, fantasy yeah, land. Yeah, medieval Europe. So then, a sci-fi setting. I'd be curious to see what kind of gameplay they would put in it. And they're very talented developers. Oh, very, they are very talented developers. And they, I don't know what they're paying their 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 art team, but they need to double it because those dudes are on point so yeah. yeah i i hope this is a video game and i hope we hear more about it soon because yeah you know i need i need some more um vanilla wear yeah we need life. some we need some more vanilla wear it's true <laughs> and then uh, finally uh let's uh talk about uh zelda majora's mask 3d remake um so uh I, i'm gonna pronounce his name so wrong eg eg anuma i'm gonna go with that uh, okay. So he recently in an interview, he talked about a couple of things um, for the 3D remake and he wanted to make it clear that this isn't like a bare bones, you know, um, we're just going to, you know, we're just going to put Majora's Mask on the 3DS and that's it. We're not going to change anything. Like he talked about how um, he, he realizes that when, when you're playing a game on a console, it's, you know, you, you, you're trying to overcome, obviously you want to overcome pressure and experience achievement, but in the portable system, you can pick up and play whenever you want. 
So he says it's it sort of creates this different experience. So apparently he's going to try and tailor the game a little bit differently in that regard. And I, I guess that is a good way to think about it. Because if you, you have to understand, like, there's certain games where it's like, okay, you go home and you play, right? But with portable yeah. games, it's like you can play it whenever. So it kind of makes the experience a little bit different. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, this is true. Like, there are a lot of games on the Vita that I don't buy because I because they just don't feel like portable games, you exactly. know? Um, pers- the only reason, honestly, Persona 4 is, is a, as, a, as much as I love that game, Persona 4 is a horrible, is a horrible game for a portable system. Yeah, um, I can see that. JRPGs in general are just not very good for portable systems because a lot of the times I spend, you know, I'm on the bus and I'm trying to play the game on my way home and then I spend the entire bus ride watching a cutscene because they take so damn long. <laughs> like, you know, um, so like that's just, that's just, you know, that, that's one of the reasons why Dragon's Crown and Hotline Miami, two of the games that I that I, I've spent almost, that I spent, I mean, the, the, my three <laughs> most played Vita games are Persona 4, Dragon's Crown, and Hotline Miami. Yeah. Two of them is because of the way they are built. Hotline Miami had 16 levels that were very short, and you could just pop in, play, try to beat your high score, and that's that. Same with Dragon's Crown. Dragon's Crown wasn't high score, more it was less high scores and more loot. Yeah. You pop into a into a dungeon real quick, and then you beat it in the in 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 one bus ride, and get some new loot, and there you go. So that's so yes, I definitely I definitely think that there are certain tweaks that could be made to to a game like Zelda to make it more accessible for a portable system. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the other big change is um, there's a, I guess there's a mechanic in the game. Because I, I, I haven't actually beat the original version of Majora's Mask. I'm about like a quarter of the way through. Um, but there's a mechanic in the game called the Bomber's Notebook. And it's basically, it's how you kind of keep track of like quests in the game. Okay. And uh, they said that they wanted to change uh, the Bomber's Notebook a bit so that it not only gives you like, uh, it not only keeps track of quests, but it also leads players to hidden events. Because he said that the biggest problem that he had with the game upon its release is that he found that there was a lot of hidden secrets that they specifically put in the game that no one was finding. Or that very few people ever found. So apparently okay. he wants to design the game in a way that's a little bit easier to find these secrets or hidden stories. Um, because to be honest, like from what I've seen, like I've obviously from watching YouTube videos and stuff like that about Majora's Mask, there are a lot of really interesting Easter eggs and little side stories in this game. So I guess it would be kind of interesting to, to see them, you know, s- you know, see them a little bit easier to find. Um, but I'm interested, what do you, do you think that this is necessarily a good thing? Because sometimes, sometimes the the secrets that are the hardest to find are the most rewarding when you find it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was just about to say, isn't that the point of a hidden secret? Yeah, for it I know. To, you know not be... But I guess, you know, it also depends. There's a fine line between, between you know, having something that's, that's, that's kind of difficult to find and having something that's borderline impossible to find. Yeah. yeah. Similar to you, I never got around to playing Majora's Mask. You know, I, I never owned an N64, and I just, I, I borrowed my friend's N64 to beat... Um, uh, Ocarina of Time yeah, yeah, because yeah. you know everyone was everyone blabber, had yeah about it so you know um, it was well worth it don't, don't I'm not trying to say it <laughs> so so I never got a chance to play Majora's Mask so I don't know how difficult any of these things are are to find but I'm like if it's if it's actually a a, a secret in the game I don't see any reason to make it easier to find so long as it's not see, so long as it's not something that is necessary to complete the game I don't. I don't see it. I honestly don't see any reason to make it easier to find because it's like, yeah. like you said, you know, the more difficult it is, the more re- the more rewarding it is to find. Yeah, the the so, only be- I I could see where his point does come across though, because yeah. this this is my example for the whole secrets uh, being hard to find. Um, Dark Souls, uh, especially its entire story, is pretty much a secret to the player because uh, you can miss it almost completely, and not even like you can miss huge huge chunks of the story like in in that kind of drives me a bit nuts because then it's like i how am i supposed to emotionally care about what is happening in the story if i can't even find out what's going on so yeah that that's yeah. one example of i could see that making it a little bit easier to find would actually benefit the game yeah. and be less of but, a detriment but, but no yeah. i do agree with you though like sometimes like little hidden easter eggs they should be hard to find 
Yeah. And, you know, like I said, as long as it's not something that's necessary to the game. And, you know, um, story is kind of necessary to a video game. So mm -hmm. I but, you know, I, I, I don't know what these secrets are. It, it, it could be stuff like um, I mean, I doubt it, but these are just examples. It could be stuff like extra costumes or something like that. That or, you know, just Easter eggs, you know, references to other Nintendo, Nintendo games or yeah. past Zelda games, stuff like that. I, 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 I say leave them the way they are. But then at the same time. As a developer, you make these things, and you do want people to find them. Yeah, so, that's so that's it, the worst thing where it's like, oh, I just spent seven hours coding this like cool little thing. I can't wait for everyone to find it, and then it's like nobody finds it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, so you know, in, in in that situation, if they because because if they looked at the numbers and they realized that like what one percent of players that played the game were finding all these things, then then it's like okay, maybe we need to tone it down a little bit. But yeah, you know. I I'm just I'm just glad to hear that they're not just porting Majora's Mask to yeah. 3DS and they're actually sitting down taking time. Because as because I I actually did sit down and play Majora's Mask and even though there's a lot of aspects of it I really did enjoy like I think the atmosphere is actually really really good in that game overall like the mm -hmm. sense of brooding presence that everyone is going to die in three days is very very you know an interesting take on the Zelda series. Um, but I do feel like there were a couple of things where it's like, I wish this wasn't in the game and I wish it was like this instead. So I'm kind of glad that they, like I said, like back on our last podcast, I like when developers go back and fix things that yeah. people said were problems. So, yeah. yeah. So when, when is it coming out? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm uh, not too sure. Spot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, it doesn't actually matter. I was I was honestly just yeah. curious. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly I feel like I I was trying to look it up right now, but uh, I think it's probably coming up relatively soon. <laughs> oh, uh, well, professionals, we're we're both professionals, flaws. Yeah. <laughs> well, on that high note, I think we're gonna wrap it up for today. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, as always don't forget to like uh, subscribe and comment and if you leave a comment in the video we'll make sure to answer your question and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys next time take care